Buried in the shadows of forgotten texts lies the untold story of a fallen angel whose name evokes terror, Belial. Once an angel of light, he became a symbol of lawlessness and chaos. But what if I told you that Belial, not just Satan, launched a ruthless attack on Jesus? A story so intense, so dangerous, it was deleted from the Bible. Why was this tale of betrayal and darkness erased from the Holy Scriptures? What role did Belial play in the cosmic battle for humanity's soul? In this video, we uncover the forbidden story of Belial's savage assault on the Son of God, a story long hidden from you. The word wickedness appears frequently in the Bible, particularly the Old Testament. Although there are many adjectives that can be used to describe lawlessness or revolt, the name Belial seems to stand out from the rest. For the most part, because of the phrase, what harmony is there between Christ and Belial? Or what do a believer and an atheist have in common? 2 Corinthians 6 verse 15 Some of Satan's other names may be more familiar to us. For instance, Beelzebub is another B name. But Belial has more connotations than only serving as the devil's name. It appears to be the embodiment of evil and depravity, more than one being is credited with it. We also see a distinct interpretation of this word and what it means in apocryphal literature. The word is used more than 20 times in the Old Testament. It's interesting to note that few of the examples specifically mention any particular entity. So, the scriptures don't indicate that Satan is the only one who is Belial. Through people, Belial manifests as a ghost or as the personification of evil. Deuteronomy 15 verse 9, for instance, seems to relate Belial to having a wicked heart. Be careful not to harbor this wicked thought. The seventh year, the year for canceling debts, is near, so that you do not show ill will toward the needy among your fellow Israelites, and give them nothing. They may then appeal to the Lord against you, and you will be found guilty of sin. In the Bible, we do come across terms that humanize Belial like, man of Belial, 1 Samuel 30 verse 22, sons of Belial, 1 Samuel 10 verse 27, and daughters of Belial, 1 Samuel 1 verse 16. This seems to suggest that Belial is a real person or other kind of being. There could be a defense that Belial is a personification of evil and that its sons, daughters, and men are metaphors or symbols. One is a wicked or lawless person if they are a son of Belial. However, Belial is used as a proper name for Satan in the one occurrence we can discover in the New Testament, 2 Corinthians 6 verse 15. However, we should note that the word Belial is used differently in other non-canonical sources. For instance, it appears that the Book of Jubilees is another demon that serves Satan. Another text from the Sibylline Oracles, a pseudepigrapha, seems to compare Belial to the Antichrist, who we see in Revelation performing acts of lawlessness and wickedness. The Ascension of Isaiah, an ancient scripture, claims that Belial's story began when he was created alongside his heavenly siblings by the Divine Hand. Belial, on the other hand, had a deep contempt for authority and tried to overthrow the established order, unlike the others who were filled with divine purpose and committed to maintaining the laws of the cosmos. Belial's revolt intensified over the ages, and his power extended throughout the celestial realm. With the promise of releasing them from the bonds of divine servitude, he developed into a captivating force, enticing other angels to his cause. Many gave into his charms, drawn by the attraction of a life free from limitations and norms. As with rabbinical explanations of evil, the Talmud and rabbinical interpretations of evil often follow a non-supernatural view, a metaphorical personification of evil. The Torah's reference to sons of Belial remained in use. Yeshu, the son of Miriam Magdala, is referred to as Ben Stada and Ben Panther as in the Taliyah Yeshu as well as Ben Stada and Ben Panther as in the Wagon-style version of the same and in the Talmud. Belial instigated a rebellion against the All-Powerful, which marked the pinnacle of his uprising. He led a legion of fallen angels in battle against the celestial powers in an effort to overturn the divine order. But his bold effort was short-lived since the power of the Almighty proved to be insurmountable. Belial was vanquished and exiled from the celestial spheres, to the lower spheres, the earth. 
His malice grew there, and he began to sow the seeds of strife by whispering in people's ears and corrupting their hearts. As his influence spread like wildfire and tarnished the purity of creation, he delighted in chaos. Belial, even in his fallen state, possessed considerable power. He was well versed in the mysteries of the heavenly order and the celestial regions. He allegedly had the ability to change his appearance in order to trick people who were trying to stop him. He spoke in the ears of kings and queens, kindling their conceit and ambition, leading them astray, and stirring up troubled nations. His reign of anarchy, though, would face opposition. The story of Isaiah's ascension is based on a prophecy that predicted the advent of a messianic figure who would represent heavenly justice and oppose Belial's evil. This person, known as the Savior, would come to earth and battle the fallen angel in a fierce conflict. Belial's influence grew as the fight approached. Knowing that his final confrontation with the Savior would be a conflict of cosmic proportions, he delighted in the turmoil and mayhem. It is stated that the Savior faced Belial in a titanic conflict that the world had never seen before, armed with heavenly might and justice. Belial was driven into the darkness and bound in chains by the Savior, who finally triumphed in the catastrophic battle. Belial would remain there until the end of time. The angelic worlds rejoiced as harmony and order were restored as the reign of lawlessness was put an end to. The testaments of the twelve patriarchs make reference to Belial. Because Belial is depicted as God's adversary rather than a servant, the author of the text appears to be a dualist, albeit he makes no mention of how or why this came to be. Fornication, according to Simeon 5 verse 3, drives a man closer to Belial and distances him from God. Levi advises his kids to pick either the law of God or the deeds of Belial. It also says that when the soul is troubled constantly, the Lord leaves it and Belial takes control of it. Naphtali draws a comparison between the goals of Belial and the law and will of God. Additionally, according to Joseph's prophecy in 20 verse 2, when Israel departs from Egypt, they will be in the light with God, whereas Belial will stay in the darkness with the Egyptians. Finally, the Testament says that when the Messiah arrives, the spirits of deception and Belial will suffer punishment from the angels, and that the Messiah will bind Belial and provide his offspring the ability to crush the evil spirits. Because it makes a man, regardless of how old or noble he may be, a laughingstock to Belial and the sons of men, adultery has destroyed many. Now. It was said that there was a period of intense upheaval and spiritual disquiet that swept through the ancient nation of Canaan. The populace had abandoned the moral guidance of their forefathers and embraced immorality, giving in to their earthly pleasures without thinking about the repercussions. A fallen angel named Belial arrived on earth during this gloomy time. Belial was an expert at trickery, deceit, and persuasion. He presented himself to the Canaanite populace as a fascinating and alluring figure who assured them of power, money, and pleasure beyond even their wildest expectations. He whispered secrets, forbidden knowledge, and riches that no human could resist with the help of his silver tongue. Belial aimed to deceive people and divert them from the good path by corrupting their spirits. He took advantage of their vulnerabilities by preying on their hidden wants, worries, and insecurities. He persuaded them that there were no repercussions for their conduct and that they may indulge in all wicked pleasures guiltlessly. Belial's promises enticed the inhabitants of Canaan, who sank further and further into the shadows. The values of justice, compassion, and love were abandoned as they turned against one another. Their hearts were controlled by desire, envy, and greed, and they became victims of their own vices. Violence, immorality, and corruption were all over the place. But not everyone yielded to Belial's solicitations. There were some Canaanite people who held fast to the teachings of their ancestors and were loyal in their religion. They understood the risk Belial represented to their souls and the destiny of their country because they were able to see through his deception. Joshua was a smart and righteous man who was one of these faithful few. Because of his lifetime commitment to seeking out truth and justice, he was able to see through Belial's facade of strength and pleasure. 
Joshua was aware that obeying the holy laws was the only real way to find contentment and pleasure. Joshua set off on a quest to free his people from Belial's control. He preached the gospel of love, forgiveness, and repentance as he made his way from village to hamlet. He emphasized the necessity of seeking atonement and the consequences of the people's deeds. Joshua's comments struck a chord with people whose souls still desire for goodness and truth despite the temptation of Belial's promises. Belial became enraged as he noticed his power waning. Joshua was the target of his rage, and he was silenced by his enemies. Joshua, though, remained unwavering in his resolve to save his people. He assembled a group of like-minded people determined to stand up to Belial's armies and get ready to fight for the preservation of their homeland. All over the land, the conflict between Joshua's supporters and Belial's minions raged. Not only was physical strength at stake, but also faith, willpower, and the tenacity of the human spirit. Thank you for your support.